And in our top business story, the UAE economy is expected to record an annual growth rate of 4.5% by the year end. And in 2015, it is projected to exceed those levels. That's according to His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, President of the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority, Chairman and Chief Executive of Emirates Airline. The statements were made during the opening speech of the two-day UAE Economic Outlook 2015 Forum, where senior government figures, along with economic experts, have gathered to discuss the prospects for the UAE economy in the year ahead. Whilst delivering his speech, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed stated that the Dubai economy has proven its resilience and ability to withstand any challenges from the global economic horizon as the country embarks on creating a knowledge-based economy. The outlook for the UAE economy looks positive, as according to His Excellency Sultan bin Saeed Al Mansouri, the UAE Minister of Economy, the UAE GDP will be valued at 1 trillion 625 million dirhams by the end of 2015, rising from the current levels of 1.55 trillion dirhams. Whilst highlighting the recent report by International Monetary Fund, the Minister of Economy added that the country will have a budget surplus of 6.9 to 10.5 percent over the next six years, leading to 2019. His Excellency Al Mansouri further stressed that the UAE economy is in a strong position to overcome the challenges and absorb external shocks, such as the decreased value of oil, due to the economic diversification in the country. According to the Director General of the Dubai Department of Economic Development, tourism and real estate sectors had been a major driver of the economic prosperity, which, is, which, which as per estimates is expected to have attracted 44 billion dirhams in 2014. All of us um, understand the diversification in our economy and I think the contribution of the oil is very small in, in our economy. Therefore, we don't expect any impact on our, econ on, on our economy. I, w I don't say any impact, but the impact will be minimum, especially in the... But uh, I think the numbers and the forecast need to be reviewed after six months to understand if there is any uh, other impact rather than our ex expectation. I think it's an achievable contribution of the tourism sector is important as well the retail sector and we all of us we understand that the, the there is also uh, an impact or uh, from the tour the tourists on the on the retail which is one of the important sector in, in, in Dubai's economy the drop in prices for Brent crude had been in top focus during the opening day of the forum particularly its impact on the fiscal budgets of oil producing countries in the region Whilst delivering this speech, the representative from IMF stated that the recovery in the prices of oil is expected to be gradual over the next year and could remain below the levels of $80 per barrel. As risks remain substantial, considering the regional conflicts as well, governments should reconsider their energy subsidies and work towards new growth models. All GCC countries are heavily subsidizing energy. Uh, that has effects, of course, on, on government spending also has uh, undesirable effects on the growth in energy demand, which in the GCC is running at around uh, three to four times the global average and, of course, crowds out uh, exports uh, of, of energy products. So reforming the subsidies will be uh, something that is coming. It's being discussed in a couple of countries in the GCC already. The global economic recovery is underway. It's continuing. Uh, it is uneven, though, and it looks slightly less uh, optimistic than I would say it looked a few months ago. But still, it is a recovery, particularly driven by the U.S. Uh, and a bit less so by uh, some other economies in the advanced uh, uh, world. On the emerging market side, I think we see a continued slowdown in, in growth rates. They're still much higher than uh, what we see in the advanced economies. Uh, but they're slowing down in a gradual way relative to what we saw before the uh, global crisis. The UAE Central Bank has announced that the money supply aggregate or currency in circulation plus monetary deposits, quasi-monetary deposits and government deposits at banks operating in the UAE as well as at the Central Bank has increased by 0.3% from 1,344.2 billion dirhams at the end of September to 1,348.3 billion dirhams at the end of October due to an increase in government deposits by 7%. Currency in circulation represents 81.4% of the total, while cash at banks was 18.6%, a decrease by 1.1% from 70.8 billion dirhams at the end of September 2014 to 70 billion dirhams at the end of October of the same year. 
Money in current accounts and coal accounts at banks increased by 0.9 percent from 431.1 billion dirhams at the end of September 2014 to 435 billion dirhams at the end of October of the same year as a result of an increase in monetary deposits by 1.1 percent, which was offset by a decrease in currency in circulation of 13.1 percent of the total by 0.5 percent. Emirates Group has released its fourth annual environmental report, which shows that its fleet is 14.5% more fuel efficient than the International Air Transport Association average. The report, audited by PwC, covers environmental data from across the group for the 12 months ending March 31st. Fuel efficiency across the passenger and freighters has improved by 0.5%, dropping to 0.3089 litres per tonne kilometre. Emirates fleet has an average age of 6.2 years versus the global IATA wide body fleet average of 11.7 years. Carbon dioxide emissions by the fleet dropped to 0.764 kilograms of CO2 per tonne kilometre, improving efficiency by 0.4%. Emirates said reductions in fleet emissions had been improved by the delivery of 24 new passenger aircraft and freighters and the removal, removal of four older aircraft. The fleet's noise efficiency factors for takeoff and landing have improved by 2.4% and 10.1% respectively. The group also said that Denata's airport operations team recycled 1,700 tons of paper products from Emirates aircraft cabins in Dubai. And developer Kleindienst Group on Monday said it has launched phase two of the Heart of Europe development on Dubai's The World. This includes the launch of Sweden Island, which will be home to 10 villas, each with snow sauna rooms. According to a statement from the company, each villa will be home to seven bedrooms spread across four floors, a gym and spa, as well as entertainment space, private beach access and a private pool. The luxurious villas resemble the upturned hull of the renowned Viking ships representing a Swedish historical treasure and the island will be home to an authentic floating restaurant based on Stockholm's famous Saluhol Market. Joseph Kleindienst, the, group, the CEO of Kleindienst Group, was quoted as saying that the island will not only be home to the finest Swedish architecture and design, but will bring the best of Swedish culture and lifestyle to Dubai. The heart of Europe is made up of six man-made islands, each capturing a different facet of Europe's unique character.